to the mobility workout. This time we're going to gear up a little bit. We're going to have a mix between mobility and strength workout. So let's start 45 seconds with a nice little warm up for your back and your legs. So it's a squat and hamstring stretch. You want to inhale, bend your knees slightly upwards, feet pointing towards the knees. And when you exhale, you fold over and really release your back, your head. Make sure when you fold forward that your head is really hanging. A lot of people look forward and then your neck is really tight. So you want to relax, squat down and then fold over. 10 more seconds. Make sure to exhale when you fold forward. Well done. Next one, a little bit of a wider squat. So you want to have your legs wide, at least double um, the width of your shoulders, feet and knees pointing outwards. And we're going to do this for 30 seconds. And we're going into a deep squat while we're contracting, navel in, exhale and inhale, get back up, stand tall, shoulders wide, shoulder blades pointing towards the spine. Well done. And here we go with a side bend. We're doing this for 60 seconds because it's alternating. You want to squat down and then side bend by crossing one leg backwards. And you can do the squat as low as you can. I like to do my squats with my hips, knee height. You can go lower if you want or the higher if you're not warmed up yet. You want to inhale when you squat down and exhale into the stretch. Very nice. Now since we got the time you can really work on your stance, on your feet. You do want to have your heels firmly grounded into the floor as well as your big toe mounts. Really press your big toe mounts into the floor and even when crossing your feet over, you do want to still have your big toe mount pressing into the floor, really having a long leg and a long spine. Well done. I hope you're hoping that you're warming up right now. So last warm-up exercise is a lunge back rotation for 60 seconds as well because it's alternating. And we're starting with a lunge backwards. Big step backwards and then rotate towards your forward leg. Make sure when you lunge backwards to make a huge step so your forward knee stays behind your toes. Slightly in front of your ankle or over your ankle so you can easily get back up. And when you rotate you can either have like I'm doing the hand on the floor. If you're very flexible, you can put your elbow on the floor or if that's too much, you can put your elbow or hand onto that bent leg, on that knee and do your nice little rotation. Most important here is the rotation and the hip opening. So we're doing two things at the same time. Hip opening, so you do want to drop your hips and a nice little rotation all the way up to your head so you want to rotate your head as well. All right, here we go. First round, strength and still a bit of mobility. So we're going down into a squat and up on our toes. 45 seconds, here we go. When you squat down, really shift the weight backwards and down. And when you come back up, imagine you're jumping. You do want to stay on your big toe mounts. So don't lift all the way onto your toes. Stay on your toe mounts and really Press down into your five toe mounts. Really feel them on the ground, lifting your heels. Very nice. And stand nice and tall, moving your arms. When you bend down into your squat, really pull the arms forward and have a straight line from your pinky finger all the way to your hip. And when you stretch up, you want to lift your sternum to the sky. Wonderful. Next one, you'll love it. Triceps push-ups, only 30 seconds. Up to you on your feet or on your knees. So the secret to triceps push-ups is to have your hands really close to one another. 
approximately shoulder width apart and slightly behind your shoulders. Keep your middle fingers parallel and pointing forwards. Now when you bend your elbows, those elbows will be really close to your rib cage, almost touching your chest. Now, if you're starting on your feet, you can finish on your knees or try to stay on your feet. Well done. Now, turn around, uh, hip lift, right and left side, 45 seconds each. So you do want to press your left foot first into the floor, lifting your right leg. And this right leg is pointing towards the ceiling. You do want to keep it very steady, no swinging, no trying to get some momentum out of this leg. You really want to have the force, the power coming from your right leg and from your glutes. You can help a little bit with your arms, so your arms and shoulders can press into the floor, but most of the movement is coming from your legs and your glutes. It's four more seconds. Don't forget to breathe. All right, now change leg and here we go. You're grounding your right leg into the floor, lifting your left leg to the ceiling. Again, you don't want to bounce. You don't want to sway. You want to have your leg in the air very steady. If you can, point your foot. If you start to have cramps, like I sometimes have, then you can also flex your foot or move your foot. Important the leg stays steady. The other, one, the other foot stays really grounded on the floor. And again, you do want to feel your heel pushing into the ground and your outer arches and all of your toe mounts. Just as in the squats, the same muscle groups as in the squat, we're just engaging more of the back part of our leg muscles. Well done. Now, turn around again. This one is in a plank pose but we're alternating lifting our legs and you can nicely point them if you want to. Here we go, 60 seconds because it's alternating. Keep your hands really firmly grabbing the floor. Remember hands and feet are more or less the same. So you do want to have your heel grounded as well as your finger mounds. And the index finger mount is the most important. Really focus on grounding your index finger mount. And this will help you to get those shoulder blades together. Try to pull your shoulder blades towards each other, really having a nice long neck. Wonderful. And then your core should be bracing and the legs should be lifting all by themselves. Try not to sway, try not to shift your weight right to left. When you lift the leg, stay grounded, stay in the middle. Brace your core. Do whatever it takes to stay in the middle. Very nice. And here we go. Little finish. Standing up. A little bit for the heartbeat. 45 seconds. Running on the spot. Here we go. Try to stay on your tippy toes, on, the, on your mount. So don't get the heels down. That will slow you down and that will get that bounce of your runnings. And you want to have your arms engaged. So make sure your arms are going back and forward alongside your legs. So you get this little rebound from your spine movement, the contralateral spine movement. And if you can, try to get those knees up as high as you can. I always try to get them as high as hip height. You can get them as high as you really want. Come on, get those in. Four more seconds. Keep breathing. Well done. All right, here's round two. You know what to do. So now we can go a little bit lower, a little bit higher, and a little bit faster. <laughs> 45 seconds. Squat, lift on toes. So the idea is to really stay grounded with your feet to keep those legs engaged. You don't want to ground your feet when you squat and then lift onto your toe mounts when you come up. I like to exhale, squat down, and inhale, lift up, because the inhale helps me to open that chest and to really grow 
into that lift. So inhale, coming up, pulling those shoulder blades together, engaging the back body a little bit, and then exhaling, pushing those hips backwards and down, grounding all four corners of your feet. Four more seconds. Get some quality reps. And here we go. Turn around, get on the floor. You want to get a few of those triceps push-ups on your feet in. And then you can, if you need to, drop onto your knees. So make sure you're staying on your toe mounts, not on your toes. You want to flex those toes in. You do really want to press backwards through your legs and keep your core engaged. Your belly doesn't sag. Really try to pull this navel in, have a straight long line between your head and your heels. Well done. You'll get another chance. Perfect. Now, right leg up, left leg down. So, here we go. Another round for our glutes. That's 45 seconds each hip lift. So you want to ground that lower leg, have your heel, your outer arches and your toe mounts grounded. Try to make really long toes of those ground leg and then lift the other leg as high as you can. I do like trying to get a little bit of a hamstring stretch in while I'm there and this engages of course the hip flexor of the lifted leg a lot. Now if you do want to do a bit for your arms and back really push your shoulders, your arms, your hands into the floor to help you with the lift. It's almost a back bend if you really push high. Perfect. Change leg. Another 45 seconds. Other leg, left leg up, right leg pushes into the floor. Here we go. Now you do want to help your back body really by breathing. Keep breathing, inhaling up, exhaling down or whatever is comfortable for you. Sometimes you need to breathe a little bit quicker because we're just coming from a triceps push-up that might still be hard on you. Now be, be really careful with that grounded foot. When you start to be a little bit tired you might want to lift those feet or just have those toes lifted. Don't do that. Keep those feet down on the floor. Heel grounded, outer arch grounded, and toe mounts, and don't cheat. <laughs> all right, all right. Here we come, back in our plank position, and we're having 60 seconds. <laughs> Wonderful. Plank, alternating left leg for 60 seconds. Now this is a little bit the same position as in the triceps push-ups, but your hands might be slightly shifted forwards a little. Now, beware of your middle fingers. Your middle fingers are parallel to each other and they're pointing forwards. You can try and shift your weights a little bit forwards and backwards. I usually tend to shift my weight too far backwards because it's easier than the weight goes onto the feet, but it's a challenge to shift the weights more forward so the chest moves towards the tips of the fingers and this is more challenging for your arms for your shoulders so you can play with this try to keep your core engaged that always helps and create this bend from your arms to your feet it's like a bridge you're creating with your body well done and here we go last one for this round second round finishes strong with running on the spot, 45 seconds. Perfect. Now breathing is the key. Really breathe. This is the second round. You might be tired a little bit, but keep running on your tippy toes. Don't put your heels down. Stay flexible, stay bouncy, and really have these, this movement as a full body movement. Your arms and legs are moving at the same time. And don't give up. Really pull through. Put those knees up as high as you can, even if they start to get heavy. I know they will, but put them up. It's only seven more seconds to go. Keep breathing, get those oxygen in, those CO2 out. Well done. Now, here's our last round. 
third round. We can squat and we can lift. Now this third round really is so you can start play with how much energy is left in your body. Is there a lot of energy left, you can really squat down. And if you're an advanced, then you can maybe also add a little bit of a jump here. That's a squat jump instead of a squat lift on toes. If you don't want to do that, then just stay with it. If the lift on toes is too much for you, you don't do the lift on toes, you just do the squats. So really make sure you're getting everything you need to be satisfied with yourself and with this training once it's done. And if it's getting slower or being quicker, so there's so much energy left, that's fine. Just do what your body tells you. Ah, no, triceps, third round. Come on, you can do this. And this will be our last triceps push-ups for 30 seconds. All right, here we go. Make sure your position is good. Position is key. Middle fingers parallel pointing towards your, to, pointing forwards and really engaging the core. Your arms will be really close to your upper body. Elbows in, glutes, butt, everything contracted to help yourself. You can end on the knees if you have to, but pull through. Wonderful. Now you can kind of relax a little bit. Hip lift, right and left, alternating. We're doing 45 seconds each. Right leg comes up first, left leg is on the ground. Now this is your third round. You know the exercise, you know what to do with your feet, you know not to sway, you know to push your arms and shoulders into the floor. But now what you don't know <laughs> is that you can stay up in the air. So you can or you cannot let your butt touch the floor. And also you can start bounce in that up position. So if you don't want to go all the way down, this becomes a little bit harder. You're bouncing, you're having little bounces in the extended position if you want to do a little bit more but keep your form. <whistles> Wonderful. Whatever you did on the other side, do the same thing lifting your left leg now. So right leg goes on the floor, left, right foot is on the floor, left leg is in the air. Do the exact same thing as you did on the other side. If you were bouncing, keep bouncing. If you were touching the floor, continue touching the floor. And if you didn't, then don't do it on this side. Try. And just be aware that your neck stays long, that you keep breathing. This will be the last time we're doing this hip lift on that side. Isn't that wonderful? And that will be your third round. Big finale, almost done. Just 10 more seconds. Keep doing whatever you're doing. You're bouncing, you're touching the floor or you're not. This is your workout, four more seconds. Wonderful. Here we go. Plank pose. Middle fingers parallel, pointing forwards. Shoulders are pulled away from your ears. Shoulder blades pulling towards each other. Now your belly comes in. Core really tight to help you keep your, that position when you're lifting those legs. We're having 60 seconds for this. 60 seconds for your shoulders, for your core, and for your butt. This is another glutes workout. The more you lift the leg, the more you're contracting your glutes. And I like to keep the leg in, a, in the upward position for a split second or a second. So you're not swaying your leg, you're not swinging it, but you're controlling it. That's basically key of any movement we're doing, of any movement at all, is to stay in control, not to sway, not to just follow a momentum, because you do want to be able to stop the movement at any point in time. And you can try this. Can I stop my leg in the upper, upside, in the upright position? Or does it fall down? Well done. All right, last one for today for the exercise pass, and then we're calling down is the running on the spot, 45 seconds. Here we go. Whatever is left in your body, get it out there. Whatever you still have, put it into your legs, 
keep breathing oxygen in see you two out <laughs> here we go knees up knees up knees up and keep bouncing really stay light on your feet and key is really to be quick to have this momentum of rebouncing from the floor remember not to push your heel down that will slow you down just get those rebounds from your arches stay on your toe mounts really good you almost did it five more seconds and you're done keep breathing oh my god cool down you did it so here we're having two cool down exercises for you one is a lunge back rotation for 60 seconds so one is to relax your muscles so we're doing this hip flexor stretch, this big lunge backwards and this rotation but we're also trying to put your heart rate down we want to lower your heart rate so you can continue doing whatever you want to do after that workout and you're really done so make sure that you are steady and slow and a continuous pace don't go too quick and really listen to your breath and try to slow down this breath. You can also slow the movement down, inhaling, stepping back, exhaling, rotating, inhaling, stepping forward, exhaling, rotating. Perfect. Should be really good by now. And then last one, as the first one, squat and hamstring stretch for 45 seconds and the stretch of the back line the hamstring the back and the neck also has a very calming effect if you do it slow if you do it with the breath you're really calming you're soothing this forward full stretch for example is a great exercise after a stressful day when you're still agitated and you do just want to relax then do a little hamstring stretch and it will do wonders. You'll be surprised how good this is. And that's it for today. Thank you for joining the Espresso Workouts Mobility Training and I hope to see you soon.